First up, he is the former FBI Deputy Assistant Director of Counterintelligence, my old job, and author of the new book, <laughs> Compromise, Counterintelligence, and the Threat of Donald J. Trump, Peter Strzok. Peter Strzok, thank you so much. Okay. Peter, are you there on my Zoom? I am, Bill. It's great to be here. Great Thanks to have, have you. Thank you. you let's let's uh, hope the Zoom holds up. Sometimes it doesn't. The first thing I want to ask you is, uh, you know, you're a G-man your whole life, and they're known to be apolitical. Does it amuse you? Does it infuriate you? <laughs> what does it do to you that it used to be, only a few years ago, that it was the, the liberals who were suspicious of law enforcement, and now that's completely switched? <laughs> you're the good guy with the liberals, and it's the Republicans who, who, are, uh, who think you're the bad guy. What, what does that do to you? No, it's crazy. And it's hard to imagine how fast that happened, and it makes you wonder how long it's going to last. And some of that you can expand from that. You know, the people cozying up with the Russians are not the pinko communist liberals anymore. You've got it turned upside down. So the question is, in this topsy-turvy world, how long is it going to take back to revert, and whether or not that happens at all, or in some bizarre new world of domestic political alliances and beliefs. Right. Well, listen, um, obviously Trump put you in a completely impossible position. Yeah, when I say you, you guys in the FBI, you certainly were high up there at the time, because he, he was outrageous in his behavior. He was saying things publicly, like, Russia, if you're listening, you know, hack... It, it, it was ridiculous. You had to look into him. Uh, that's my view. That, you know, this crossfire hurricane, which was the... Uh, looking into whether Trump was a mentoring, you had to do it. But it's interesting that once it was done, you know, we have to be open-minded here, it seems to me your view was that there was not something that happened there. You said in a private text, so we know it was real. You said, my gut sense and concern is that there's no big there there. Uh, you said, we have not seen... Uh, the New York Times has had a big story... In 2017, right after Trump was inaugurated, Trump campaign aides had reported contacts with Rep Russian intelligence, was the headline. And you said, we have not seen evidence of any of that. You said, we are unaware of any Trump advisors engaging in conversations with Russian intelligence officials. That confuses me. Uh, the Don Jr. Meeting, yeah, I can understand. Uh, the, the Manafort, we found out, was, was giving polling data to this Konstantin Kalemko, who has been called a Russian agent. Why did you say there was no there there? Um, well, so you have to read that last document like a legal document. We were trying to figure out when that New York Times article came out who the hell was talking to the Times, because they got a lot of things wrong, but some of the things were accurate. And so we were trying to figure out, OK, who were those sources? And when you see, when I say no intelligence officers, you got to think about that like a counterintelligence person. You know, I spent 20 years chasing spies and recruiting people. And when I say that, I'm talking about like a full-fledged foreign intelligence officer, not somebody who might be working with them. And that's the kind of person we saw all over the Trump campaign. We had him in contact with a foreign policy advisor. We had him in contact with the incoming attorney general. We had him in contact with the incoming national security advisor. And person after person after person in the Trump campaign had these undisclosed contacts with the Russians that they'd started and continued not telling the truth about. So when I sit there and look at it, the worst thing could be it's some big conspiracy, kind of run from the top by the president. But it doesn't have to be that to be really bad. It's kind of like if you walk outside and the entire block has, every car has its window knocked out. You could say, well, you know, we don't think one person did this. Well, every window is still knocked out. It's still bad. And so when I looked at that, when I made that comment, I was simply saying, I don't think Trump is sitting like a mastermind on top of all these contacts, controlling and coordinating what's going on. What I thought was there are a bunch of grifters, opportunists, people trying to make money, all sort of individually pursuing their agendas in a way that made them vulnerable to the Russian intelligence. I think you're right. He's definitely not a mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. No, honestly. I mean... Finally, it sounds like a full crowd. I mean, I don't know that. <laughs> no, I mean, but I, I constantly think people give him too much credit for that, and I think you're right. It wasn't like that. I think it's just the way you described it. In fact, uh, Dan Coates, who was the, the director of national intelligence for a while, he said he thinks Putin has something on Trump. Well, that may be true, but I think what he has on Trump is the knowledge that Trump is 
a giant narcissist, or at least that's what I have on Trump. I, I don't think you need to have something on Trump. I learned this a couple of weeks ago when QAnon, you know, the, the total nutcases who think that the world is run by this secret cabal of, of uh, pizza-eating pedophiles <laughs> who eat babies, you know? I, I mean, they're really out there. And, and Trump, when he was asked about him, yeah, I, I think they're good people and I, I take their support. Whoever says they like him, he likes them. If it's white supremacists and they say they like him, he likes them. If it's Vladimir Putin and he says, I think Trump is brilliant, Trump is like, I love this guy. <laughs> I don't think it's much more complicated than that, right? It's about the narcissism. I think that's one thing. Look, if you're, if you're trying to deal with somebody, that might be enough, but put yourself in the shoes of the SVR or any Russian intelligence service. Just because something works, you're not going to stop with that. So sure, Putin, he's got a team of psychologists who have looked at Trump. They probably know him better than most Americans do, and they know how to push his buttons and play him. But that's not going to stop them from finding other things to hold his leverage over. Some of that's coming out in the public. Like we had through the Mueller report, the example of Trump is on the campaign trail in 2016. And he tells a crowd, I think down in North Carolina, I have no financial dealings in Russia whatsoever, none. At the exact same instant, Michael Cohen and others are trying to get a deal at Trump Tower in Moscow. Well, Trump knows he just didn't tell the truth. He knows he lied. Putin knows he lied. And so to maintain that, because if Putin turns around and says, hey, look, I'm going to tell the truth, and you're, every one of your campaign or the people at that rally are going to know you lied, that gives them leverage. So if you're an intelligence service, you don't stop just because you have one avenue in. You keep looking for all these different ways to impact somebody's behavior.